All right, so this is a suggestion via Patreon. Uh, the name of the video is The Dark Secret Behind Japan's 0% Homelessness Rate. Guys, really quickly, I spent about seven months in the late 2000s um, in Sundai uh, in Japan. It was, on, it was on the east coast of Japan near the, near the water. Um, I can definitely tell you right now that the chance of you actually encountering someone who is homeless is probably zero. So the, the zero percent is pretty high. It's just pretty, it's pretty solid. I mean, guys, it's absolutely correct here. Um, they do a lot of things better than the United States does in terms of keeping people uh, from falling homeless, guys. They do. Uh, they care a lot about mental health, and there are a lot of different types of housing options, guys. There are. Um, in terms of, like, another thing that kind of... Um, afflicts the United States of America are probably substances, all types of different substances that people intake into their body that may cause them occasionally to end up in this matter of homelessness. Guys. Um, Japan does not play with that nonsense. They do not play with any type of, of narcotic. They don't play with these things. Trust me, you'll end up in, in, in pretty much in jail for a, a long time. Um, so that's another thing, guys. Um, what else? What else can I uh, add to that here? Um, a lot of the homelessness that you will actually encounter in Japan will probably be men, almost exclusively. And you're not really again. You, you're not going to see them, guys. They they normally are in like the shadows. Um, like their culture, very specifically, does not really even facilitate the concept of being homeless. It doesn't. They. A man uh, should be taking care of himself consistently, like completely self-sufficient here. Uh, and if he isn't, then he just isn't. It's his fault type of thing. Because um, I was speaking to someone uh, a while ago, actually, about this kind of overall topic. And, and he, he is uh, Japanese and he's just like, yeah, guys, we don't care. Yeah, he's like, he's like, listen, we don't care. Right. So either. So if you fall homeless. You're homeless, that's your problem. We're not gonna help you, type of thing. I'm just like, wow, that's wild, bro. That's that's crazy to say, but that whole overall mentality has has made Japan zero percent because they know they're not gonna get help at all. Guys, they're you may hope for some type of NGO to come in and be like, hey, yeah, I can help you out a little bit, but Japan is not gonna help you, bro. Instead, they're gonna do every single thing humanly possible to make it so your life is even harder type of thing, which then forces you out of homelessness and in a sense, if it's possible, right? And uh, back to being a functioning member of society. Um, and, uh, you know, let's go, let's go and check this video out, guys. Uh, enough of me speaking. Also, sorry for like this weird freezing thing that's happening. I, I see it over here. I don't understand why it's happening. Policies. In the many ways that Japan stands out, there is one particular statistic that completely sets it apart from any other country in the world. Despite being one of the most populous nations, it is the only country in the world that has a homeless population rate of almost 0%. While the United States is experiencing a major homelessness crisis, yeah, with the number the of most... people living on the street rising every year, Japan seems to have found the solution yeah. to a- Because America is getting much more expensive consistently and wages are not rising. So if, if, if most people can't afford to live where they work, Yes, societal issue. <laughs> we have a lot of issues. We do guys. not really have one. But if you look past the headlines, the situation starts to look very different. The reality behind this seemingly amazing success reveals a disturbing and dark reality about what life in Japanese society is like and what is really going on under the surface. So how did Japan manage to have 0% homelessness rate? And why is it actually not good news for the country? This is why the is dark secret news? of how Japan solved homelessness. I mean, I hear 0% homelessness. I think that's a great, that's a great news, but all right. According to official statistics, Japan, a country with over 125 million residents, has around 3,000 homeless people, about 0.003% of its When I was there, it was at like 900 
900 homeless people for the entire country, guys. All right. Population, which is way less than other countries with low homelessness rates like Switzerland and miles ahead of countries like the US. Yeah, but we're wild. Why? Exactly. We're wild. Well, there are several reasons that are often mentioned as the cause of this extremely low rate. So first, being homeless is actually very difficult in Japan. And in the Japanese culture, it is incredibly stigmatized. According yeah. to a founder of a non-profit organization that's supporting the homeless in Japan, there is no culture of compassion for homeless people in the country. And they are usually seen as people who only have themselves to blame for their situation and who deserve no help at all. This is even stronger because the majority wow. of homeless in Japan are men who are traditionally yeah. expected to be self-reliant. And their and failure their to do that is seen right as an embarrassment, both by the public and by themselves. As a result, the authorities tend to make it harder to actually be homeless than in most countries. Any kind of begging in the public is banned by law. Homeless people tend to be wow. pushed out of sight, and cities like Tokyo are known for implementing what's been called anti-homeless or hostile architecture. Like oh, parks that are locked at night guys. so that people can sleep the there, benches or benches and other city Japan. features that are yeah. specifically designed to make yeah. lying, sleeping, and prolonged the sitting on them uncomfortable in Just order to cities. discourage homeless people from staying in the area. And so making it both difficult and socially unacceptable to be homeless contributes to the low rate as it is something most people try to avoid at all costs. So what we're getting from this overall topic here is that what he's saying here is we cause, we are causing our homelessness rate to go to be so large in the United States of America because we're more likely to help the people that are homeless or feel compassion for the people. That's basically what's happening. We're causing it. Also, at the same time, we're not really doing anything for the mental health of people. We're allowing all types of narcotic abuse, right? Wow. Okay. I get it, bro. We're here. What also helps are some of Japan's unique policies that, while not designed to reduce homelessness, helped to do it anyway. Japan has very, very strict laws on basically any drugs other than alcohol and Great. very severe punishments. And as a result, only 1.6% of the Japanese population tried drugs other than alcohol in their lifetime, compared to 46% of Americans, which means... I'm gonna be honest, I have no problem with that at all. Um, no. that drug addiction in Japan is barely an issue. And according to Tom Gill, a Japan-based social anthropologist, this is another key factor. At the same time, Japan has a very robust healthcare system, which is also significant since 30 to 35% of people who experience homelessness in the United States have a mental illness. And while in Japan, people with severe mental illnesses tend to be placed in mental health institutions in the United States, they often they end, end up, up on homeless. the street. And finally, Japan has relatively accessible housing because it builds more houses than any other developed democratic country. Unlike most Western countries where building housing became increasingly difficult due to various regulations, Japan took the opposite route. And it has very few restrictions, making it very easy to build anything and making it relatively affordable. So, but say that all sounds because it sounds, I mean, listen, if you take regulations away from like building structures, Oh, I don't know, guys. Uh, that's you know, that's that's a little tricky for me personally. I understand sometimes very specific uh, genres of business, let's say, um, are absolutely flooded with regula flooded with regulations to the point where things just don't happen anymore, right? I get that, but we still need regulations in buildings. Um, to a certain level at least. At least give me safety regulations, please. Great. And on the surface, Japan can be an example of a country that basically managed to solve a major social issue. Except that's not really true. Despite the official numbers, the reality is a lot more grim. And there are many, many more people without a home in Japan. But they are hidden okay. away from sight and government statistics. So how is that possible? 
As you might have seen in another one of my videos, in the 1990s, Japan experienced a severe economic crisis when the stock and real estate markets collapsed. In the following years, it became extremely difficult to secure a steady, regular job with a decent pay, and so millions of people were left to survive on low-paying temporary part-time jobs. Many of them never managed to recover and they became known as Japan's lost generation. People with no status, no place in the society, society and no future. As a consequence, many of them were not able to hold down an apartment and pay rent every month, even in a relatively affordable Japan. But at the same time, they would do anything to avoid living on the streets, in order to avoid the shame and stigma from the society that comes with it. And so the phenomenon of cyber homeless emerged. Basically, Japan has a uh, wide net. The 24 hour um, like cyber cafes, <laughs> guys, we can like play video games all night long but they're okay yeah 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 yeah, yeah there are people that definitely sleep in these things guys for sure a lot of people do this guys um cheaper than a hotel and you can stay the night for almost nothing guys um i had to i went one time not to stay just to use the computer right um but yeah there were definitely people like waking up and leaving if that makes any sense, guys. Work of 24 hour internet and manga cafes, where people pay by the hour and can stay as long as they want. And since the 1990s, many of members of Japan's lost generation have begun using them as temporary shelters. They don't have beds, but people often sleep in the computer cubicles. And yeah. over time, the cafes expanded their services to offer food, drinks, fresh underwear, of or showers. They did. Of Gradually, they did. this became an industry of itself. And today, the cyber cafes are basically a uniquely Japanese concept of commercial homeless shelters, ones that you have to pay for yourself, which is, by the way, not even that cheap. Prices for an overnight stay in a small booth cost somewhere between $17 to $28. The Netcafe refugees, as they are known in Japan, often Net have some Cafe kind of a low-paying part-time or temporary job that doesn't Just pay, pay for enough that. to oh, rent an God, apartment, guys. but they can afford I think we would call these the working poor to pay for a few hours in an internet cafe every night. These net cafe refugees are homeless. They don't have a home or a permanent address, and they're excluded from many aspects of life. But they don't look like it. They don't sleep outside. They work, and they do everything they can to maintain a clean-shaven, polite, well-kept appearance to avoid the shame that comes with being homeless in Japan. That's why the wow. government statistics of homeless people in Japan are That's considered so wildly underestimated. Non-government organizations estimate that the real numbers of people living on the streets in Japan is at least three times higher than the government says. And that's even without taking in account the cyber homeless. People staying in internet cafes on most nights for at least few hours. If they would be included, the real number would be radically different. Since in 2020, it was estimated that at least 15,000 people lived in cyber cafes in Tokyo alone, five times as many as the official number of homeless people in the entire Japan. Now, in one way, this phenomenon of cyber homelessness can be seen as positive. On one hand, uh, it helps explain. people to avoid falling on the very bottom of the society, and it allows okay. them to keep some level of dignity even though they don't have a home. But at the same time, the existence of the Netcafe refugees demonstrates the incredible problems that the Japanese society has. Yeah, this sounds, now the starting to sound a l very cultural. A whole third yes. of the entire Japanese workforce, over 22 million people, are part-time or temp workers. Not by choice, but because they can't get a regular full-time full -time job. job. Not all the Oh, don't worry. They do the same thing in America, bro. Absolutely. Um, oh, oh and you need to go find a job? They're going to definitely offer you part-time. They do not want to give you full-time because they have to give you benefits. Um, and and then you, now you have to get two part-time jobs with two different other co um, companies. And uh, yeah, it's, it's just a cycle. They do not want to give you full-time. Some of them are homeless, so, yeah. but most of them are only paid a minimum wage. They struggle to afford a normal rent, What's and they have no prospects there? of their economic situation ever getting much better. And so even though Japan's official homelessness rate is much it's lower than low, in the US, the percentage really of people living in poverty is actually higher in Japan than in the States. And while only a few end up on the street, many more end up on the fringe of the society, stuck living in cyber cafes and capsule hotels. 
girls and in a never ending cycle of not being able to get a guys i have a horror story about a capsule hotel bro these things are too small and i'm too fat proper job to get an apartment and not being Period. able to get an apartment <laughs> to get a proper job because of societal pressure, they prefer to remain invisible, and society prefers it as well. Those a problem that stays out of sight like is a problem that can be easily ignored, and the government can continue to claim a 0% homelessness rate. But underneath, it is a symbol of all the things that went wrong with the Japanese economy, and a problem that's here to stay, as the number right. of the invisible homeless is only about to grow. You can imagine. In the many because the, the whole world is like suffering from like financial crises, guys. All of it. Everyone. Everyone that is participating in this modern society absolutely is suffering, guys. Um, that's why you never know. Just when you encounter someone, you treat someone with dignity and, and niceties because you never really know exactly what that person is going through. Um, I live by that, period. Uh, Japan's homelessness rate okay i see what he's if okay yeah if we add in all this other stuff then yeah i can definitely tell you a lot of the people that i i encountered um in japan in those seven months they definitely were living in very temporary places if that makes any sense but i honestly took that as just how people moved around but but yeah he's not wrong if we count all these people who technically have no permanent address, then the zero percent homelessness rate is is absolute. It's, it's a farce, guys. It's a farce. Um, but all right, listen. Let me know in the comments. Next thing we should be checking out here, and I will get into that as soon as I possibly can. All right, and listen. You guys all have an absolutely amazing day, and enjoy your day thoroughly.